Choosing a stage name at the best of times is fraught. I mean, <laughs> Kashmir isn't exactly a great choice, but a local dancer here picked Matahari, a name freighted with the mysterious East, spies and sex. Mm, but is there a belly dance connection? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kashmir, and today I want to look at the myth of Mata Hari. First up, was she a historical person? Hmm, yes, she was. There's certainly enough photographs of her. Was she the daughter of a Javanese Buddhist priest and a Dutch woman? No. Was she maybe the daughter of a British aristocrat who married a Hindu temple dancer? Uh, no. Well, maybe she was born in a sacred Indian temple and was taught the ancient dances by a priestess. Uh, no for that. She was actually born in the Netherlands in 1876 and her father was a shopkeeper. So where's this Indian connection coming from? In 1895 she married Rudolf MacLeod and for about five years uh, she lived with him as his wife <laughs> in the Dutch East Indies. Now that's what we call today more or less Indonesia. It's not India, uh, not by a long chalk. So did she learn any temple dancing while she was there? The sources vary from not at all to a few months. Now, as dancers you'll know, how much a busy mother can learn in a few months of an extremely difficult dance form. So let's say no. Maybe she had previous dance experience. No, that's a no as well. But was she a dancer, a professional dancer? Yes. Uh, from uh, when she, after her divorce, she moved to Paris and uh, she supported herself there as an artist model, a prostitute and a dancer. In 1905, she created the persona of Mata Hari and she used that as her stage name. Uh, was the dance uh, influenced perhaps by the dancers of Egypt or the Levant? Uh, no. Did she use the movement vocabulary? Wouldn't seem to be. What about what we now call Middle Eastern music? Maybe she used that. Nope. Um, was she dressed like they did in Egypt as belly dancers? Uh, no. So could she be called a belly dancer by any stretch of the imagination? I don't think so. So what sort of dancer was she? Well, she was an exotic dancer in both senses of the word. So she played up the whole temple dancing, ancient dancing. She looked quite um, exotic in herself. She was quite dark and quite tall and she played it up to the hilt. And so she told people she was an Indian temple dancer and most of them believed her. However, what she did was definitely in the exotic dance category. Basically she was a stripper. She would come in with little bits of chiffon and she would float around and she would sort of move about slowly removing everything except for her hat and her bra. She didn't like to have her breast bare but she was bare beneath, beneath the waist and she would culminate her dance with a simulated sex scene with an Indian god. I don't think that's belly dance. But while we're here why don't we look at the spying side, because that's the other thing she's known for. After all, she was executed in 1917 as a spy, as a double agent, effectively. She herself said, a courtesan, I admit it, but a spy, never. It turned out she took money from the French and the Germans. Neither of them got any value for their money. She actually said that she had no intention of doing any spying from the Germans, she just wanted the money and she never got around to actually spying for the French. 
her court case was pretty flawed. Uh, basically, it looks to me like she was a scapegoat. So, was she a spy? Probably not. But one thing we can say with certainty, Mata Hari was no belly dancer.